In this lesson, we're going to talk about exponential and logistic modeling. Our targets for today are to write an exponential growth or decay model in the form of f of x equals a times b to the x and use it to answer questions and context. Remember that exponential growth, meaning that b is equal to 1 plus the percentage rate as a decimal, or exponential decay, meaning that b equals 1 minus the percentage rate as a decimal. Our second target is to write a logistic function given the y-intercept, both horizontal asymptotes and another point. Okay. In example one, it says the population of Glen Brook in the year 1910 was 4,200. Assume the population increased at a rate of 2.25% per year. First of all, let's talk about the growth rate. In this case, we're increasing at a rate of 2.25 per year. That means that our growth rate is going to be 1 plus 0 0.0225, giving us a growth rate of 1.0225. Alright, we're asked to write an exponential model for the population of Glenbrook. Define our variables. So, let's let x equal the no years since 1910. Okay, so our function here is going to be f of x equals our initial population in 1910, which is 4200, times our growth rate, 1.0225 to the x power. All right, in part b, we're asked to determine the population in 1930 and 1900. Okay, in 1930, that's going to mean that x is 20. Remember that x is years since 1910. So if x is 20, we're just simply going to find f of 20. Using our calculators, using the formula f of x, we would get 6,554 and 1.39. Okay, remember that we always round to three decimals when doing these. In 1900, we're going to have to use the value x equals negative 10. So for f of negative 10, you simply plug in negative 10 into the function and we will get 3,362.143. Alright, now in C, you are asked to determine when the population is doubling the original amount. Okay, so the original amount was 4,200. So twice 4,200 would be 8,400. So we want to know when our population will be that much. So we're going to take 8,400 equals 4,200 times our growth rate 1.0225 to the x power. And we're going to use this equation to solve for x. So we'll start by dividing by 4,200. So 2 is equal to 1.0225 to the x power. So now we're going to use logs and we're going to take the log of both sides. And here we'll get x times the log of 1.0225. When we divide, we will see that x equals 31.152 years. Okay. Alright, now let's look at example two. It says the half-life of a certain radioactive substance is 14 days. There's 10 grams initially or present initially. So to write our equation here, we need to set up, we need to first of all realize that half-life, so our growth rate is going to be one half. Okay? So if we write this as a function, we know that f of x is going to equal our initial amount, which is 10, times one half. Now our exponent, this is a little um, different because it ha occurs every 14 days. So our exponent is going to be x over 14. Okay? So think about this for a second. If it decreases by half every 14 days, if we let x equal 14, we would have 10 times 1 half to the 1 power, meaning 10 times 1 half, which is 5. All right. In A, it says express the amount of substance remaining as an exponential function of time. Defined our variables. I guess I already answered that question. <laughs> so we're going to take f of x equals 10 times 1 half 
to the x over 14 power. All right, we're going to let x equal time in days. Okay, um, and that means that f of x is going to give us a mass in grams. Okay. All right, now in B it says, when will there be less than one gram remaining? So to set this up, we need to know when one is going to be greater than 10 times one-half to the x over 14th power. Okay. So to solve this, we're just simply going to divide by 10 first. So we get one over 10 is greater than one-half to the x over 14th power. I'm just going to go right over here. Then we're going to take the log of both sides. So we have the log of 1 over 10 is greater than x over 14 times the log of 1 half. Remember your rule of logs here. So when we simplify this out, we are going to see that 3.322 is great, oh sorry, less than, because the log of 1 half gives you a negative value, we have to switch the sign, less than x over 14. And then when you multiply both sides by 14, you will see that x has to be greater than 46.507 days. It's really important when doing these problems that you keep your data in your calculator so that you always have the exact data and you round your final answer to three decimal places. Okay? All right, number three. It says, find the logistic function e equation of the form y equals c over 1 plus a times e to the negative bx that fits the graph below. If the y-intercept is 5 and the point 2, 24, 135 is on the curve. Okay, so first let's look at this equation for a second. We know that the y-intercept is 5. That means we go through the point 0, 5. We also know we go through the point 24, 135. We're going to use both of those values to determine our equation. The next thing that we need to look at is our limit of growth. In this case, according to the graph, we have a limit of growth of 500. Okay? So our basic equation to start is going to be y equals 500 over 1 plus a times e to the negative bx power. Okay, remember our c value is the limit of growth, so we can tell that by the graph here of 500. All right, let's start by plugging in the point 0, 05. We want to start here so that we will have 5 equals 500 over 1 plus a times e to the negative b times 0. This works out nicely because you're going to get e to the 0 power, which is just 1. So we have 5 equals 500 times 1 plus a. So to solve this, you're just going to use some algebra here. We get 5 times 1 plus a equals 500. So 1 plus a equals 100. So a is 99. Okay, That's part 1. We're not done yet because we need to plug that in to our, back into our equation. So we're looking at y equals 500 over 1 plus 99 times e to the negative bx. Okay, now we're going to use our other point, 24, 135, to solve for b. So we have 135 equals 500 over 1 plus 99 times e to the negative b times 24. All right, so now we need to simplify this. We're going to have 135 times 1 plus 99 times e to the negative 24b equals 500. Divide both sides by 135, and we're looking at 9, 1 plus 99e to the negative 24b equals 500 over 135. Okay, in the next step, you can go ahead and in your calculator plug in 500 divided by 120 or 135, subtract 1, and then divide by 95. 
or 99, I'm sorry. When you do that, you get e to the negative 24b equals um, 0 0.027. All right, now remember, when you're working with e as your base, you need to use the natural log. So in this case, we're going to get negative 24b equals the natural log of 0 0.027. All right, now you're just going to plug in your calculator, take the natural log of 0 0.027, and divide by negative 24. When you do that, you get b equals 0 0.15. Now we just plug that value in to our original equation, y equals 500 divided by 1 plus 99 times e to the negative 0 0.15x. This would be our logistic function for the graph given.